Thank you for choosing to watch another free e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. Today's tutorial will look at the iPad app ShowMe. ShowMe is broadly similar to EduCreations and is a good alternative to look at now that EduCreations has really restricted what you can do on their free version of their app. In this free learning lesson you will learn all that you need to know to get ShowMe up and running in your classroom. So let's not delay a moment longer and get right into it. Today we're going to look at the iPad app ShowMe. Now ShowMe is very similar to the iPad app EduCreations um, and both of them have got the free option and then the, the um, paid options. What I want, you to, I want to start with today is actually the website where you sign up and actually look at what you get for the free version of ShowMe and I believe at the moment it's probably a little bit more generous than the free version of EduCreations but you just need to know before you embark on this what you're getting yourselves into. You're allowed to create one user which will be you um, or a class account if you like and then share that with all of your students but on the free account if you come down here what you'll get is one hour's worth of, uh, of cloud storage so they count their, um, their, their content in terms of number of minutes produced so um, once you reach your 60 minutes of all your students and if you think about that if all of your students have got access to this one account they're going to get to make two minutes each so organizing your class may well mean that you need to make 60 in or 30 individual accounts for your students depending how you got your things set up um, so you just need to take that consider into consideration um, you're only allowed to have one group um, which would be your class so there's there's not much um, that you can actually do in terms of organizing in a granular level with the way your kids work but let me just show you how to do those kinds of things anyway so if we come to heat me over here and come on to settings what you can see down here is all a bunch of things I can do I can change and I can connect to Facebook so whenever I update um, or to Twitter whenever I upload something from show me it would show up on that, that stream there you can do that as an as you see fit but down here on the left hand side you can see that I can make my students and here you can see um, I can create students so let's go through the process of creating a new student there is no bulk user um, creator here so it's a bit tedious so let's just call this um, and you can elect to say whether that student's um, 13 or under so let's say the student is under 13 and click create there we go. Now we've got this really kind of um, not useful password to give to a student who's perhaps um, less than 10. So we need to come into Manage Students. So now you can see I've come into my Manage Students area and I can change everything I need to do. So I can change the password, I can change their username simply by clicking on them. So let's change that password for Dummy Student 3 that I just made. If I click on here, I can change that to something standard that the students might want to use. So it might be RM10 uh, student 3 and then put the year in 2015 and so that's going to be a standard thing to do. Um, I can also change the um, username. You can see here we've got user 1. There's no way a student can remember that so I could call them uh, something like and then we could do that 03 and click save. And so that's how you can manage your students. But on the free account, this kind of functionality is not really very useful to us. Um, so it, I would suggest probably the best way to manage it on the free account is to have individual accounts and then use your blog uh, or your wiki or your LMS as the place where your content is saved to. So let's have a look at that's That's looking at the, um, the website of all of this. So here we go. Um, on, here we are on my iPad. And I'm going to go into my show me. So we click on Show Me and it opens up and this is the overview of what Show Me looks like. So we can see here we're on the tab that says My Show Me's and we can scroll down here and see all the Show Me's that I've done and they will you recognize those ones are the ones that were on the um, website we just looked at just now. Um, if we click on the sort of lower level here you can see the, the, the Show Me's that I'm following. If I choose to follow there's some I can look at. I can look at some activity um, and so on. But basically, let's get into the whole function here. Obviously, if I've organized my students into my one account that I get, or one group that I get as if on the free account, they'd be here in my groups. I can start a group, but as explained before on the free account, 
Um, I'm not going to waste my time doing that and unless you're paying for this I would recommend you didn't either so I'm not going to waste my time showing you how that works. You can click on explore, this is all the kind of stuff you can go through. Down the left hand side here, these are it, um, show me's made by other teachers from uh, elsewhere. Um, so you can click on maths and find some stuff, elementary maths. So there's a whole bunch of stuff down here that you can use as part of your e-learning program created by other teachers. So don't dismiss this. Look at it, have a look through here. You can see some elementary maths. Obviously a lot of it's going to be American, but you've got some you know, fourth grade maths going on here. You might find some stuff here that you want to use or follow, or indeed use those as examples of children um, demonstrating or sharing their own strategies. So you've got an alternate voice in the classroom. So these are quite cool. Um, and worth looking at. But wait, to come back to my show me's, what we're going to get into now clearly is how to create a show me. So let's get into that. Click create over here. So here we are on my um, show me, my blank show me, and you can see that it's a pretty similar kind of inf interface, pretty easy to see. We have a, have a white screen. Um, if we click on the color bars across here, you can see I could, I've got a range of colors I can choose from. Um, you can see if I click on the plus sign down here, there's a range of other colors I can choose from. Let's click on this. We get a color range. So this is quite a cool feature. We can um, look at our different color options. So let's choose that one there. And those are the colors that I can choose. Once I've chosen my colors, I can then use those to draw if I wanted to. Um, you know, you can set up your design about what you're talking about. And so we can do all of that. Made a mistake, use the eraser. We can erase content quite easily. So um, these are the basic features. Um, let's come back to here. What you see is a, a, a much broader erase tool here, clear drawings only or clear all. So if I wanted to clear the whole thing in one go, I would have done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look a bit closer at this. So let's just imagine we're setting up something for students to look at or they want to import their own content and get things organized before they start recording. So over here we've got the text option. So we can just tap anywhere to, ta to type. We've got this choice of text along the colors along here. We can make text bigger or smaller. So this and we can change the color instantly, we can make it bigger instantly, and then we click done. And now it's we can click on it, we can move it around. See, there we go. Once you click on it, we can just move it around. And now I did that through a double tap. So just do that again. So double tap and the bar goes away, which allows me to have you move have the entire space. And then I'm going to put that over there. Click one space done. So we've got some text in place. We can um, use that to label things. So obviously we can, um, let's find a picture now. So what we can do is we can choose a photo from our existing um, photo library. We can take a photo. We can search images from the web. So let's look at this. Now obviously you've got a whole issue here around um, copyright, um, so we want our students to be taking royalty free images, but let's just for argument's sake, let's just look for something, um, right, I'm going to take that line there just clicked on it and it's now inserted into my page now again the same thing we can do is here is I, I can edit this I can move it around um, I can use the pinch and um, and, and uh, expand option to make it bigger or smaller I can use my single finger to move it around so there we go that's where I want it tap now what you need to understand is that everything is editable. If I just click, simply press on this picture until it goes blue, I can then move it around. 
Um, and that's something your students need to understand about this. And the key to that is that the picture or the text, if you look, look on here, the text can now be moved once the toolbar has disappeared. Can you see the ribbon in the top left hand corner here? That indicates that the elements on the screen can now be edited. While they can still see the toolbar here, nothing can be moved. That's in place and in position now. So now we can start looking at some of the other features in here. So if we click on the um, image sign here, we can choose a background or we can grab pictures from Dropbox or grab pictures from uh, Google Drive. So let's choose a background. Um, it allows us to choose a different background here and maybe this is not the best place to show you. So what I'm going to do is click off this. So we can add text in here. So let's set up a new slide. And over on the top right hand corner here, you can see a right pointing triangle. I'm going to click on that. And we're now on page two. So let's look at the background feature again. Let's click on here, choose a background, and you can see that we've got a whole bunch of stuff. So if we click on here, you've got square, you've got a grid. Um, let's just look through some of the other ones here. We've got some, um, we've got some isometric drawing dots here, which we can use for creating um, shapes. Um, and so there's quite a comprehensive list of backgrounds here. Um, so we're going through. Um, but we've got some handwriting stuff here as well. So if you look at this, so you could use this for handwriting. Um, I have debates about using these tools for handwriting, but certainly um, if you wanted to, to get students to practice on the lines, if you had a stylus, for example, um, you could use this. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a really, really good tool. So we've set up our slides here. So let's just come back and change this one. Choose a background. And uh, we've got lines, certainly. We have a colored background. Put green in. Is not very exciting, um, but you can see here that we've got some options here. So we've we've even got uh, Cartesian graphs. So you've got stuff w well laid out for you, so students can explain stuff. And that's the whole point. The whole point about this is about show me. So you can make your own tutorials to show key learning points for your students. You know about you know the slope of a graph and the x y value and all that kind of stuff, and plotting the points. Um, and so working out what they are, etc., etc., and your students can do that, or you can do it for them, for them to watch, and then make their own to demonstrate their own understanding. So once you've set things up, we can create our um, lessons. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come back, choose our pen color this time. We're going to come back to here, and we're ready to record what we're talking about. So. The clear, the clear thing here we have to do is we have to know our script, you know what we're going to say. We've organized things in order so you can use it. You can see how this could be used for recounts and retelling and literacy. You can see how this could be for explaining or sharing strategies in mathematics. Um, there's a whole, whole, I mean, it's just a brilliant app because it's a generic app and it's how you, the teacher, make this work for you that makes it powerful. So we click on record. It's now recording my voice. And so now this is where the interaction happens. As I'm talking, I'm explaining. So I may be wanting to talk about some key feature about the lion here. I might want to draw some text here. I can refer to the next page. I go across and I'm talking about um, translation and rotation or something. I don't know. Um, making it all up as I go along here. Um, come back to here. And all these actions, all these movements, all these all this audio is captured and there's nothing to um, make a new screen and you know type your title that's it so what I need to do now is I've finished my recording I need to save it so in the top left hand corner here you can see is the save show me so I'm going to click on this and I have an option here I can either save it as a draft because I want to come back and edit it, um, and which means you can open it up again, everything will be saved. And unlike in Edu Creations, there seems to be an unlimited number of drafts that can be saved. So I'm going to save it as a draft to show you what I mean. I'm just going to click Save Draft here. There we go. And you can see here that I've got one, two, three, four, five. Um, show me's that I've got in progress which means that they're still they haven't been saved they're in work so I'm going to imagine I've come back to here and I've now saved this I want to click save show me and this time it's complete and now you can it's now recording my voice um, I get I get the chance to check it to make sure it's what I want to see and, and have it working the way I want it to do I'm going to assume yes so click save now I give it a name Click 
next. Um, and you have to allocate a topic to it. So this is this is for the wider community. So you can choose to ignore this, but if you want your work to be seen by just more than your students, perhaps the wider community, it does pay to um, designate where this comes from. So I'm going to choose this as other. I'm going to put in here just tutorial. There we go. Training and tutorials. There we go. And choose topics that's it. it's all done done adding topics on the bottom here bottom right there and it's done and now you can see that this blue bar is indicating that my work is now being posted up to and processed by show me so that once I'm there there we go that's now you can see how that changes the gray the grayed out ones are the ones that are in progress still need to be edited and as I say energy creations you only get one so far I've had five in progress I'm sure I could add more and that has now been processed and sent up to at, uh, my show me account and now I've been deleted by 41 seconds from my um, one or 60, 60 minute total. So from here I would then go back to my website, just click on the program here, this should open now for us. All right, I'm not going to let this play, I'm just let it pause, but it's now recording my voice. So down here we click on the, the share icon here, if we click on share and we've got the options here from where we want to share it but embedding is what we're after here and we just copy this embed code, you see it's iframe so it should be HTML5 um, compatible which makes basically makes it go anywhere. Um, and if you're not sure how to um, embed into a blog or a wiki or a learning management system or your website, just click on the link below here and you will be able to um, view another one of our videos that we, where we show you how to embed a photo babble uh, document into a wiki and into a blog a blogger blog but the principle is exactly the same you just need to find the embed code on whatever service you're doing but check out the link below and have a look at that and so you just copy and paste that into your site and that's how you get the um, show me into whichever classroom resource you're currently using. Thanks for watching this free tutorial. Your support is important to us and we value your feedback. So please leave a comment below and also don't forget to like us. We aim to produce one tutorial per week so why not subscribe? You won't regret it. So until our next tutorial hits your feeds, keep practicing!